Hi, and welcome to our presentation of the paper Spiroplay, a suite of breathing games with spirometry. There were many people involved in the last two years to set up and execute this research, including medical specialists, developers, and various HCI researchers. Asthma is a chronic airway disease. The prevalence of asthma in children is very high. For instance, a recent prevalence research in the Netherlands indicated that 7 to 10% of the children have asthma. With the help of certain tests, these children can be monitored regularly, which is also advised by the Dutch Lung Alliance. Spirotry is such a test, during which, for example, a child blows into a turbine connected to a handheld device. Unfortunately, performing this test does need a specific execution. This execution starts with maximal inspiration, followed by maximal forced expiration, and is then continued into a complete exhalation. Doing this correctly, especially for children, is normally achieved with appropriate medical supervision. However, if we want to monitor over time, we also want to measure this in a home setting. In our previous studies, we saw that at home, the number of correctly blown spirometry tests had room for improvement. To come to this proper execution, visualizations with real-world metaphors are being applied to provide incentives. Several of these implementations still focus on only achieving one of the goals of a proper test, such as blowing out candles metaphor, which can be related to a peak flow. We looked at many of these. We did find that in some related work, multi-target incentives are already used, where they not only measure the peak flow, but also inhalation and full exhalation. A good example of this is this elephant metaphor from related work, in which the bucket is emptied upon full inhalation and it's going to go up. Then when forcefully exhaled, the three flowers on the far right appear, and then based on the continuous and full exhalation, the other seven flowers appear. Instead of offering just one such a metaphor, to keep it interesting and fitting a varied group of children, we wanted to offer several games. Based on our previous work, this fits what we like to call a suite of games approach, where we offer a selectable set of games fitting a person where each game is adaptable and uses tailored goal setting based on their capabilities. To come up with the games and accompanying instructions besides working in a team with medical experts, we also work together closely with children in an attempt to include the child's perspective and to address what Kostlowska and Aurora called the probably hardest challenge of such a test, making it fun. Furthermore, two high school students also helped us with their ideas, which they got rated in their school by a class of about 12-year-old pupils. Building strongly on related work at the core of our process were four co-design sessions. We did these at a daycare center, which, which we have a recurring arrangement. In total, 12 children participated. For these sessions, we followed a paradigm of snack time, during which we were introduced, uh, we then turn, started with a circle time where we got together and explained or reminded the children of the bigger picture of the project and the goal of that session. This was followed by the idea generation, which was generating ideas or selecting and working out ideas was the focus. Often using post-its and felt tip pens where needed, we helped in writing things down in text. At the end of the sessions, we planned a roundup during which we explained what would happen with their work and what, would, what we would do in the next section. In these first two sessions, we focused on metaphor generation. The first two sessions resulted in 56 additional metaphors. Subsequently, after these sessions, we filtered the now targeted total metaphor set of about 100 ideas. We started the filtering with informally coding the ideas by their recurring topics, and then picked four suitable looking metaphors of those most filled topics. In order to further, further filter the 24 remaining metaphors to about 12 metaphors to implement, we had both medical experts filling in a survey and we let six children rate the metaphors individually, using card-based ranking according to the triggered level of fun, blowing properly and want to do again. In the fourth session, we related to specification. We looked at feedback for errors. Note that in the end, we decided to exclude many of these as we realized funny feedback would backfire and incentivize unwanted behavior. Three metaphors were then first implemented and could be tested on a tablet and commercial device. The first implemented metaphor is a diver. It consists of walking a diver to the end of the springboard to jump, get a cape, to reach the sun and go beyond, followed afterwards by applause and a big splash. The second metaphor is popping balloons. This is pulling back a bow to shoot an arrow, set this arrow on fire and pop balloons. The third metaphor revolves around a car. It consists of roughing a car to start it, making it become nicer and reaching a finish line. 
In total we had 11 metaphors, also including fishing, playing soccer, bowling, a dog growing hair, a dragon breathing fire, a hurdle race, a dandelion, and tides on a beach. After a pilot test leading to some improvements, we did a user test at the hospital with 30 children with asthma, who performed the spirometry test with a responsive metaphor. The children were equally distributed over the three implemented metaphors. The technical physician observed execution and wrote down any feedback the children gave. We then showed them two gifts of the other metaphors, all of the three rated on a scale from 0 to 10. The technical physician then explained all the 11 metaphors, after which we asked which three they would prefer to play if they could, and three they would dislike the most. Beyond the current paper, we also looked how the unsupervised metaphors probably scored on errors made. When looking at the results of our current study on preference, we saw that the dragon and soccer metaphor were the favorites. Whereas the dark growing hair and blowing seeds on the dandelion were disliked most often. Interestingly, when also looking at the ratings from the 20 children that gave a 10, only 14 indicated that games, also in the ones they would prefer to play. This might indicate there is a difference between fun and want to do again especially as 15 of the 18 occasions in the individual card sorting also had some form of difference. However, whether one can really measure this difference accurately has to be seen, as they are likely to be strongly correlated like Reese found. Our results also indicate that playing a game might influence whether they prefer to play that metaphor. As the children rated the game, they played lower. Perhaps this is an indication that children like diversity and this kind of short games they could play. There were also quite some differences in the ratings they gave between the three met rating metaphors. Both these differences in ratings, as well as the preference to not play what they already played, strengthens the idea that a suite of games approach might be suitable in such a setting. However, we have to be careful as partially it can also be due to expectations being higher than actual gameplay. For instance, some children were frustrated with the implementation of the balloon metaphor. There are also other limitations in our work. From the body of related work with metaphors and biofeedback, we know the importance of a tight link with the real world. Although some metaphors seem to achieve this, including the beach metaphor, and according to the participant's response, clearly in the dividing diving metaphor, that the game moved with your feelings, so when exhaling, she went up. However, for other like the car, this seems farther away from this embodied fit, something we advise researchers to more closely pay attention to in the future. We also have suggestions for several elements about reaching metaphor goals and spirometry. The first is to provide incentives that can also reward going beyond 100% expected value, such as in the car metaphor, crossing a finish line. Secondly, we reiterate the importance of going beyond only responding to peak value. And although this was not a medical study, perhaps following Kozlowska and Aurora's suggestion as children might perform differently per age group in the time within they reach peak flow, this one second might be tailored to compare values shorter than one second. Thirdly, when providing feedback, consider to go beyond binary feedback. For instance, in the soccer metaphor, we only added particles and a cheering up audience. Whereas in the car metaphor, there were variable out feedback on the uh, peak flow, and the form in the form of several nicer cars. At the time, it seems that not reaching the metaphor can also be perceived as a punishment, where this even was the case for not reaching the most beautiful car. During the implementation, the developers together with the experts also set several requirements. For instance, when a child did not fully inhale into a device as it measured it. It is still valuable to be able to measure the full exhalation, including noting that limitation. Similarly, this separation is useful for full exhalation and peak flow. More recent studies and upcoming guidelines also seem to go towards this direction. Furthermore, the inhalation animation, even if cut short, should be followed directly by exhalation. For example, if our diving metaphor jumping halfway across the spinning board was possible. Some metaphors did not clearly indicate how much is expected, so we added example gifts in the menu, but more importantly, when the metaphor was not clear enough, in most cases as a quick fix, we also added progress bar, indicating 100%. Although this comparison was outside the scope of the paper, currently we do not yet see a clear difference in performance of the three metaphors overall. Nonetheless, we still expect the kind of behavior triggered most strongly can be related to a metaphor. For instance, blowing out a candle or breathing fire might help to trigger a strong peak flow, whereas emptying or filling a bucket might trigger extended duration. And in the meantime, we do have a first implementation of all 11 design metaphors. And until it feed game release system based on executing a limited number of tests a day and fitting this idea, where we, what game is unlocked can be linked to the type of error made. We also improved the art style inspired by contemporary popular cartoons, and in the process we also regularly included surveys to make it a child-directed art style. 
We of course plan to look into adherence and quality of tests also in relation to this personally unlocking. Unfortunately, our plans for a long-term study in order to look into adherence and quality are cancelled due to current regulations. We are looking into automatic fault detection once we finish this with additional data. We will also share our code. Probably not many of the viewers are looking into spirometry specifically, so as also strengthened by the reviews responses, it's worthwhile to consider whether parts of the design process could also be relevant beyond the spirometry context. We of course think that the suite of games approach deserves additional emphasis with additional opportunities. We also see benefits in certain elements of how we include the children in a health-focused fo design process and what not go wrong. And especially compared also to other breath-controlled games, it will be interesting to compare the applicability of the found requirements and guidelines in both directions. With that, I would like to end the presentation. Thank you for watching and we hope to discuss the work with you soon. And also like the many, I would also like to thank the many others involved in the project.